No, but I mean that's that's just that's when the uh, oh, anything ends. That's the that's the fashion. Hey, show. everybody! Hey. Look who I have with me together in a room: John McCook, in- the bold and beautiful, and Torsten K. Run the Bold and Beautiful together. It's nice. It's so nice to see you guys. Thank you. It's good uh, to see you. Thanks. Thanks for having us on. Of course, of course. So this story right now that's playing out that viewers are seeing is really interesting because <laughs> it's putting it's it's pitting you against each other. There's a lot of drama. There's a lot that uh, Ridge doesn't know. So what was your reaction, John, when you found out about this story, that it was going to be father against son and that this was juxtaposed against Eric's health? Well, I, you know, I was very happy. I'm, I'm happy to have my stories with, with horse and I'm very happy to have the father son stuff. We love that. It's, it's, it's full and it's, it's round and it's, it's heavy and it's full of love. And, you know, this is a story about how they love each other. The conflict that you're describing, the conflict that happens is uh, begins from a place of great deep love between these two characters. And so the, the ageism part of it, the fact that they, Eric is older and that his, it's a family business. I mean, we can, it could be a tire shop and we could be having the same trouble. Uh, uh, the older guy runs it this way. And the younger guy says, yeah, that's okay, but we'd like to change it a little. And the, this, there's a feeling of disrespect and disloyalty uh, that gets exaggerated in, in, in the mind the more it goes on. Uh, this is a great story between the two of us, and I love it. And the more conflict we have, uh, the richer our love story is, frankly. Carson, what about you? Do you like playing con- like in competition with the father? And is does Ridge's ego so big that he believes like he is the way to lead this company in the future and like his designs are the bomb or what is he that's an interesting question i don't i don't know that it's necessarily about the ego of it i think this this company needs to be run and and dad asked his son to do that for him uh now everything in place is in place and now now eric has decided that he wants to take over again that he wants to do something so it's not even about my designs against his well we we have something in place that is going to work and and you're kind of you're going to mess it all up by what you're trying to do here. That's right. But uh, that that your opinion is right for your opinion. But the fact is that that the, the younger generation, uh, they have sharp elbows. And uh, even if they're not critical, they can they can shove things around on the desk that uh, don't belong there. They should be here because that's where they've been for 50 years. And now they're moved over there. And even right. that can can rankle a bit. And I think those even those little moments like that are uh, hard to t- stomach. Sure, but that's, I mean, that's, right? that's, how it that's what you say. <laughs> so I want to ask you this. When when Torsen first came to the show in 2013 as Ridge. I almost quit. That's what I sure. want to know. What was your initial impression of each other? It feels like you did quit. <laughs> <laughs> no. My first impression was from other people. Uh, he had a reputation with a capital R, which uh, is a good thing, if you ask me. Uh, he was known as uh, a good, a good, wonderful actor. Uh, and I thought, okay, that's to begin with. Let's start there. And the other things I heard about him was that he was respectful of everybody on the set, that he respected uh, all the the grips and, and the, uh, the, the cable pullers and the people with gloves on and the prop people. And, and he had... Uh, Respect for what the world I mean, that's, that's just, and and not just the actors. And so uh, I liked that. I looked forward to that. And and when I met him, I found that that was true. <laughs> that was absolutely not true. That's true. No, it was true. And so and, and they also said, and he's funny. He likes to have fun, uh, but he knows when not to. And I thought, well, that's kind of you know, uh, that's kind of like me. So maybe we'll get along. And after the first, you know, 18 months, we did. 18 months? Isn't no, it? No. Listen, this guy, you got to understand something. <laughs> this man, this is his show. It's always been his show, right? So whatever happens has to go through him. And when there's a story that he's not involved, it's just not as good. And this is not me saying that. That's anybody saying that. He's just, he's the heart and soul of this thing. And when I was asked to join them, he called me at home. How he got my number, I have no idea. And I 
would love to know. It's a lot of people have your number, buddy. Yeah, that's probably true. Yeah. But um, okay. so, there so. was there was a really cool thing to take the time and and introduce himself, and uh, it started there. So there was a mutual respect that I I enjoyed. I don't know where that went, but uh, it was nice in the beginning. Dissipation, my boy. So now, yeah. so now what happens moving forward ten years later when you go to the set together? Is it is it giggles and all that before you shoot a scene or do you just get into the scene if it's dramatic or how do you work together? Because, John, you've always said to me, Torsen makes some of your work even better. You've said that to me about some of the scenes you've done. Um, you? Yeah, I did say that. Yeah. And it's not because he's funny, uh, um, because being funny is very important to me. But uh, he's he's wonderful. And, it's you know, we always... We say it's good to work with, play tennis with a better player and it makes you better. But that's just, that's a cliche. When we work together, we huh, we care about the work. We care about the scene. Even if it's not as rich and full as we want it to be, we do our best to make it that way. And he wants to play there. He wants to do that. And so, uh, yeah, I, I appreciate that so much about him. And it's it's the together thing, right? You you walk in and sometimes we laugh, sometimes we don't, but you go, go out and you create something together, which is important. Yeah. And it's not funny. I mean, we're not doing it. We're not coming out, okay, let's be funny and now let's be serious. It's not about that. And it's not about being cavalier about about the work. It's It's about enjoying the work and knowing that it's really fun. It's really fun. And if it's not, it's really hard. And so... Let's let's enjoy this together because this creativity is uh, is enervating. And it should be fun. If it's not fun, why are you doing it? There right. you go. I was going to say, uh, you know, John, fans are very concerned that something terrible is happening to Eric. Very, very concerned. And as they've seen this play out with the tremors and what they know about what's going on and him coughing up blood and the issues he's having and at the age the character's at, they're very, very concerned. What it now? I know last year you won an Emmy for uh, another storyline. Um, I think it was the ED storyline partially. It's an age related storyline. Story, and now you're doing there's something else is happening here. Yeah. Do you relish getting the opportunity to tell that kind of story? And do you think we're all going to need the hankies? Are we going to need? Are we going to need Kleenex? What? What do you? You know what? I think you need Kleenex any day you watch our show. Frankly. Uh, whether somebody is uh, on, the, on the brink of being really ill or not. Uh, I think uh, if, if, if the character dies or if the character lives, you're going to need Kleenex, God knows, and he's going to need a lot more than that. No, no, no. This is um, playing, uh, playing this older character is, is who I am. It's, I can't play, you know, a guy in a, in a frat house in San Diego. I have to play an adult person with gray hair, you know. And uh, so here's who I am. And, and I think there's a, a, a large percentage or at least a, a, a hefty percentage of our audience who are over 50 and 60 and 70 years old, you know. And this is, uh, they, they identify, they, they, they like to see stories about people their age and with the same kinds of problems, you know. But this is, you know, it's not about ageism. Ageism smacks, a, it's a bad word uh, these days. That's not what I mean. I'm just playing uh, the the part I, I've been playing for years and years, and now it's been a long time. So here it is. I'm proud to do it. Carson, how do you think Ridge would feel if he when he when and if he finds out that his father is sick, and he's in this competition, been in this competition with him? Do you think Ridge will feel guilt written? I mean, how will Ridge feel? It's always difficult. Fathers and sons have such complicated relationships, and also, an, you know, an, a, a person who's aging as opposed to somebody who's in their prime, you know, how do you feel? I, you, I, don't, I agree with John. I want to take the age thing out of it because it, it makes no difference. If you love somebody, you don't love them more or less because of the age. Right. Right? These guys that have uh, an amazing relationship and they uh, complete each other in some weird way, right? And if you feel that somebody that you care about is not feeling well, uh, everything else goes out the window. The competition is something that Eric started uh, and Rightly so, I guess, but but uh, his health was was not something that we were concerned about at the time. So now if that comes into it. Let's see how that affects the competition. The competition is a standalone thing, as far as I'm concerned. No, it's I agree. Nothing to do with their relationship as as father and son. And you're right because 
fathers and son, it, it, those things have been written about for years. And I think like mothers and daughters too, because everybody on the planet knows how to be a son or how to be a daughter to somebody. Uh, so it, it can, you know, playing a, a father, maybe not, because not everyone gets to experience that, but mm. everyone is somebody's kid. Right. And I just know that the scenes that you guys have shared, I mean, I think Torsten, you're one of the best, like you cry so well and everybody, it gets very touched when Rich cries. That's you allergies, know. man. I don't know what it's you're talking allergies? about. Okay. Yeah. Okay. They got to clean that set. I know, yeah. it's, it's <laughs> dust from Red Skelton. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, John, Eric and did not want to tell Donna that he was having health issues. She knows a little bit more of what's going on right now. Where do you see Donna and Eric in terms of the women in Eric's life? You know, is she is she one of the loves of his life or is the true love Stephanie? And, you know, and how much would he, well, how much would he let Donna in? And everything. Oh my goodness, uh, that's that's a good question. But it's all timing. It's all about you know the years that Eric spent with with Stephanie. She was indeed the love of his life and uh, the love of uh, of his business and uh, his partner in in creativity and and in business anyway. Um, she was the love of his life forever. However, he had before he met her, the love of his life was um, Beth Logan, who's the uh, the mother of the Logan girls, which uh, that's that's really old history, and that's kind of in the books back there. So he's had he's had different loves of his life for different reasons. Uh, how does Donna compare to that? It's not a comparison. It's who he loves now, and how she loves him, and what he right. needs and wants is is Donna, and then she is uh, she's not some. You know, a little uh, bikini-clad girl in the valley anymore. She's uh, not a little girl, and uh, she's not in a bikini that often. When she is, it's wonderful. But she is uh, growing into being this 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 woman with him, and uh, she's very happy to bring to him who he needs. And he sees that, and he's absolutely so happy to have her there. It's not comparison. It's not a comparison to anyone else. And do you think when the love of your life is something you can only decide at the end of it, right? It's not something you can decide in the middle of it because it's yeah, the love of your life so life. far. That's right. So I have kind of a list if you want to see. I it. thought. What's the list? Yeah, list. Wow. Yeah. What's this one get on here? Kimberly, she's not on the list anymore. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. <laughs> you know. Oh, 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 my goodness. This one makes sense. Oh, my. That does. Wow. I'm going to call her. Secret, the secret list. On yeah. your list? On your list. Um. You've got RJ back on the canvas. You're working with Joshua Hoffman and you're both working with him. Uh, John, you're working with him clearly on this uh, fashion show storyline. And right. and uh, Torsten, he's your on-screen son. So what right. is it like to, what's he been like to work with? Um, and how do you like having that character back on the canvas to like interject into your story? Well, it's, it's nice to have the generational stuff going on right yeah uh, especially since we're in this competition to see what the next step down is from that or the i mean thomas is there but he's busy doing other stuff to, to sure, have rj sure. come in and see where he fits into the company and then what he brings it, it's it's cool and joshua does a nice job with that he does and he's not a blank slate you know he comes in with the character comes in with his own accomplishment his online skill and his cartooning and his, uh, his graphic artist and so on what it's history too. Yes, right? it's history, and so here he is, this this young adult, and uh, and Eric needs him. Eric needs help to draw, and and he very gratefully accepts uh, the help of his grandson, and is uh, very grateful for it. And and in in return, uh, uh, his grandson learns from him the way Ridge did, in a way that uh, Ridge uh, might be looking at it saying, "Well, I should be teaching him that," but but he's. But he's so happy that his son is here in the business that the jealousy with a small J is uh, just a small part of the story, a very small part of the story. We love working with him. He's cool. He's very cool. Yeah. And he's, uh, he's, he fell right into it very nicely after about, I don't know, four days. Um, towards a very specific Rich, number. I know. Well, the first three. <laughs> four <laughs> days. Uh, it's, it's, Ridge, is, Ridge is back with Brooke. How do you think Brooke would feel if she knew Eric was sick in this competition, and do you think she'd feel torn and pulled between her ex Eric and her current guy 
Ridge? Do you think her feelings, are, how do you feel about that? That's that's a question for her, really, right? But uh, I, I know how much she uh, loves Eric and I know how much she loves John. Um, but that's a question for her. I mean, I, I don't, if you had True. to pick two of them, I mean, honestly. I mean, honestly. Don't I have, ask us. I have don't people ask. here in the chat saying they're both terrific, but they're Team Eric all the way. I want to That's, thank you for plugging into those people, whoever so they are. Your wife is on the computer. My wife is on the computer. <laughs> she doesn't let me do it, but your wife fine. is here. Thank, thank Brad you for coming, Lorette. That's amazing. Thanks, Brad. Thanks. Hey, Susan, Susan, get off. Susan, get off. Susan, 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 Thanks, Susan. Uh, Listen, Michael, I'm I'm Team Eric. This is not just. I agree with them. This is not. This is should be his win. Absolutely, I'm, I agree with those guys. Uh, you know what, what? You know, Michael, we are team. We're team story. That's what we are. We're, we're on a soap opera. I mean, to pull way back from this and be generic about it. We're two actors who love working. We love to take a text and go, look what we get to do. Oh, my goodness. Uh, look what we have to do. But we, we, we do it. We look at it. We look at each other and we begin to work. Uh, we begin to work on it together. And that's the joy of working with Taurus. And I can't say someone like Carson because there isn't anybody like him. Thank God. And so we, we do this work together and uh, we please each other. And that's our job to make it better, even better than, than it is here. You know, that's our job. I mean, we do have people in the chat talking about everybody's uh, career. But I, and for Torsten, you know, you were on all my children and one life to live and poor charles and this is i believe this is your fourth show um most what of those you... aren't on the air anymore is that anything to <laughs> do killed with you? Killed we did all. not yeah. kill those shows we did not okay right. um, okay but help. but the process of going through all that you realize at one point i realized along the way that you were like really good in this medium was there a moment where you like this click for you because you were patrick and you know what was it like for you on this journey? Did you intend to stay? If if something clicks and you think you're good at something, that's when you got to quit. Uh, if, if you think that you've accomplished something and you've reached some kind of plateau, well, then it's over. I um, I show up every day. I try to show up every day and I know my lines and see what every, everybody else is bringing. This is not, they're all different shows. This is this is not, I've done this one, I've got to do that one. Um, there's a reason why I left shows and, and um, why well, end up here? That's a whole other interview. But yeah, I, I don't. I don't think you ever get to that point where you think you know stuff. Do you? No, no, I don't. Uh, it's always a, no. It's a surprise. Every day's a surprise. I mean, he, he we surprise each other with a, a different line or a different uh, angle on on something, which is a surprise from the from the rehearsal. Uh, that's what we're here for. That's what. That's the fun of it. You know. Um, one of our people asked, Betty said, Ridge, will you and Eric fight causing Eric to go to the hospital? No, nah, he's going to go to the hospital because he doesn't take care of himself. That's why he's going to the hospital. Yeah, that's why. Nothing Too to many martinis. Him. Too <laughs> many martinis, baby. Yeah. I hope not. We we had that a few years ago, I think, where yes. I pushed you a little and, and you collapsed. You did? Was that you? Yeah. yeah. That's what happened. Now, you know, we... we, we uh, Physical physical confrontation for these two is not something we do. We we get very angry and very hurt and very insulted with each other, but but we don't slap each other. Uh, we don't punch each other out. That's for other characters on the show. We don't do that. We're not strong enough for that. No, we're not. I'm certainly not. I know that. Yeah. Um, Torsten, you were nominated for an Emmy for outstanding. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. I know we haven't had the Emmys this year because of everything that's gone on with the strikes and all of that. Um, John is the defending champ in the category. He won last year. Um, mm -hmm. And I want to know, do you, can you tell us, do you know what scenes were on your reel or what landed you this nomination? Do you know anything you can share? Here's what I can share with you. I'm, I'm not a big fan of award shows. No, you're not. I'm not. Um, partly because it, listen, and I, I don't know who all the other guys are. Do you, do you see who else is nominated? If I said that I watched all their stuff and that I think I should win over them, I can't because I didn't watch it. And even then, even if I had, that's not for me to say. I don't know what's better and what's worse. I don't know any of that stuff. I mean, we work in a vacuum a little bit down here. I don't watch a lot of television. And 
if you if something clicks with an audience, that's that's our job. Uh, awards, I don't know. I don't not sure. I'm glad you won. And and I can honestly say that you deservedly so uh, got that award because mm-hmm. I watched you do it. Because you were in the scene. You made the scene good. You know, I, we I worked carried, together. My scene was because he carried me in it. And so then I got nominated. Look, you know, these that's just, that's right. We don't set out to get an Emmy on these shows. We okay. set out to do good work. And and if a nomination comes along, that comes from the Academy and, and from Academy members who are people we don't know and uh, who do watch other things and, and uh, make make judgments about it and voting and stuff. It's, it's, uh, but it's, it's the same with all of And it's, you know what? Everyone that you've met, you meet so many people uh, over the years, you have, Michael, that, that have, we all have a skill set. Right. And if somebody writes a story that works for your skills of being an athlete, if you're on the right team, you can shine. It, it, it doesn't if you're on the wrong team, it doesn't make you less of an athlete. It just means that you maybe don't get the same opportunity. So it's all about the screen. Carry the ball. You didn't get to carry the ball that year or that story. Which is okay. Which is I, all right. Which is okay. And, it's, and I never like these competitions anyways, where it's apples over oranges and you're comparing. You So these stories are also different, too. Nobody's doing yeah. the like we're watching five people interpret the same thing, you know, the same exact. Yeah. And even then it's, it's someone's opinion. I don't. So yeah, I'm not, not a big fan of it. Never was. And I also, you know what I don't like what we're talking about this, you know, you have to nominate yourself, which is the weirdest thing to me because you're saying I'm so great. I should win this. I'm That's not right. Anybody else. That's right. Nobody else would do that. And I think if you're going to pick actors that you like, you should be able to turn on the TV any given day and say, you know what? Did okay today. You shouldn't be able to send in five scenes or six scenes where you had some meat. It's an everyday thing, right? Yeah, you're right. You're right. Although my Emmy does look really good on my mantle at home. I'm it's thinking really about that, Torsten. Right? What if it looked really nice in your home? As just it do like- look nice. My wife has two of them, and my no. kids remind me every day. I <laughs> do they? Two. Yeah, yeah we don't need another one. It's 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 the, the the idea of it is lovely, but it's uh, I'm I'm glad John that that made me very happy. <laughs> well, John's win was great because it was so deserved. After you know, I mean, how many years we've known each other the whole time, John? That you've been on yeah the whole time, the whole time, yeah. Time. And it's been because, such a- you know it's it's deserved because the scene was good and it was it was executed well and it was good material and we. Uh, on the day we we did it okay, but and, it's more than that. I think a leading actor is not just the scene. You're leading actor means you're leading a company. You're not just an actor. You're a lead actor because you set the tone, and that's what you do. I don't think I do that. I think you do that, and that's why you won that. There you go. It'll be the only one you ever get. Oh, that's true. That's but, true. But I'm happy to have it. One is good. So on October 25th, which was announced today, people did a big article drop on the fact that on October 25th, it will be the fashion show will start. There'll be five a five episode special event on the Bold and Beautiful starting at the end of the month. And we'll actually get to see this whole thing um, unveil itself, which is which is very highly anticipated at this point. Um, and I and Marie, we just we found out today Marie Osmond was part of it. There's a nice picture with Torsten and Marie Osmond. Um, was it nice yeah, having yeah. having Marie and and Tracy Bregman and Kate Linder were all part of it? And I was wondering, was it nice having them there? You know, those guys, those guys were amazing. Um, I've known Tracy just from the hallway, you know, and Katie just you know say how do these guys? But they came and was so nice. And it, look. When we all work together, it's fun. But to get new people in, it's a new energy. And and uh, Marie Osmond was lovely. Couldn't have been kinder. You, John wasn't there for some of this. I wasn't for most of it. Yeah. I was yeah. sick for a while. So I, I wasn't able to, when they actually shot the fashion show uh, with the gowns and the guest stars and, and all the actors, I was home with COVID for three days, you know, and then I got better. And then I came back and had to read all the reshoot shows uh, dovetail myself into them but i've seen the stills and the energy of uh the energy of everybody talking about those days was was very powerful so uh i look forward to seeing it actually i do it was fun 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 couple of days and so at the end of at the end of the day do you think like do or die ridge and and eric's because of their relationship even though i think you mentioned it because of the ups and downs or any conflict when the chips are down they would be there for each other in a heartbeat, whether it's over whatever. Do you, or do you think there would be some reason they would not be? 
No, and if there was, if if we were estranged at any point, for for any strong reason or bad reason, uh, it wouldn't last very long, because the story is about how much they love each other, and it's not just that they're family; is that they love each other so deeply that uh, whatever happens, they will end up all right in the end. I'm sure. Hopefully, hopefully, <laughs> bring Kleenex. You know, bring some Kleenex. Was there, uh, I just as we wrap up, Torsten, was there a scene that you recall with John that particularly that you were in a scene with that actually moved you so much, like you were just so in the moment, but then really were moved by what he, his performance was, a scene that you two did? Yeah, I, I, this is not one scene. This happens all the time. This this guy gets lost in something and you get lost with him. It's nice. We, we were doing the scene yesterday. We picked up a picture and he hadn't looked at it before. It wasn't weren't aware of what was on it and you're just looking at it and he he got lost in it. You could see him get lost in it. And that's it's nice. Um because you've seen actors and I shouldn't no, yeah, well, some actors phone it in. They they go, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna have this emotion. I when I did this in the mirror this morning, I looked wonderful. Uh John <laughs> doesn't do that. He shows up and and he he got moved by something and he didn't know that was gonna happen in school. When when someone just uh, gets lost in the moment, it happens to us back and forth, back and forth. It's it's a great gift for a couple of actors, actresses to be able to uh, to have to, to to put defenses away and 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 lose who you are uh, when you go home and to be someone else here with each other. Uh, we, we, this is a very we're very dependent on each other and the work that we do. Uh, you can't do this by yourself. Uh, sure. I, I hate it. <laughs> no, I hate it when it's a scene where Eric's standing there and remembering things. And of course, you're not seeing it because you're going to put it in later. So I go, okay, I'm pretending to see uh, this stuff from my history that touches me. It needs to be, you need to be in a scene with another actor. And it, we need to uh, feed each other that kind of energy and that kind of creativity. And uh, it's great to have with, with somebody like him. I have a couple. I don't like him, but but it's it's very nice that he does that. Uh, Kevin C in the chat says, "Love both John and Torsten. I watched John when he was on YNR as Lance, and I love Torsten as Ridge. I would like to see Jamie Lynn Bauer on B and B to reunite John and Jamie." Oh, that would be cool. Yeah, that would be cool. Why not? Yeah, you know, I did. Look, we have uh, where it was. Where it, oh, the the bold, the young and the restless had its fiftieth anniversary. What was it? The party just uh, recently, and uh, both Jamie Lynn Bauer and Janice Lind were there. And here was this picture of Lance and Lori and Leslie, which is like really old, really old soap opera history. Um, I would I would be thrilled to have either one of those ladies show up and have their dressing them. It would be really fun. Heidi asks, we love you both. Torsten, do you still see any of your One Life to Live co-stars or behind the scenes people from One Life? We look forward to watching more b and I, I still, I talk to Bob Woods. I try to talk to him every, uh, every week, but he's moved to the Carolinas, so it's not as easy. Why is it not as easy? It's a phone call, right? But he used to live in New York. We, when the kids were younger, we'd always go there for Easter. Uh, Bob Woods is one of my favorite people in the world. Yes, he's great. I just talked to him. Um, when Andrea Evans passed, we did a tribute to Andrea and oh. Bob, Bob Woods participated in it. So I had him on, call him up in South Carolina. He's all, he always shows up for when yeah. I do really appreciate him. Um, oh, he's the best. Uh, two other questions. Uh, one is Torsten, do you think <laughs> who would win a boxing match between Eric and Ridge? Eric, because there's no way I could hit my dad. And I think you could smack me around a little bit. I could, a little, to start with. I and then I would stand there and say, no, no, please, please don't hit me. Don't hit me. At the show tonight. Yes. Uh, now, yeah. A couple questions for you before we wrap. Nadi asks, does Eric miss Stephanie? Does Eric miss Stephanie? Uh, he, he, <laughs> sure he does. But he also... Uh, has great reminiscences of her, uh, most of which are laced with a kind of sarcasm and a kind of uh, relief that uh, the constant uh, not there anymore. But he loved, and uh, he loved 
what a ferocious mother she was. Uh, she was a ferocious wife too. Uh, that was not as easy to accept, but she was a great mother to his children and uh, a powerful partner in his life for 25 years, for 35 years. Larry says, just to wrap this up, the cast on Bold and Beautiful, they're excellent in their roles. This set of actors should stay on the show for a long time. Okay, I just don't worry about it. Yes, we have yeah. here tonight. Yeah. We, I, uh, I thought that um, uh, a new, a new name for our show because Eric has the shaking hands, right? And uh, uh, so I thought we'd call it uh, Tremors and Hammers. Uh, I'm going to call it Tremors and Hammers for this, uh, this story, and then we'll get over it. Gotcha. All right. I'm not CBS, but I'm sure it's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. Run it up, CBS. All right, guys, everybody, please tune into The Bold and Beautiful for this storyline with Torsten and Ridge and all the time, Torsten and um, John, I said Ridge. Um, and the fashion show is going to kick off October 25th, a five episode arc. The drama will ensue. The fashions will be all over the place. We're worried about Eric. We'll see what Ridge does yeah. and see how this uh, pans out. Uh, Torsten, I really appreciate you doing this. It's been wonderful to see you. John. Always a pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you so My pleasure too. See you. Right. See you. Thanks for having me.